Now I'm just going to let you in on a secret. If you need a miracle tonight, start plugging in right now. Start plugging in right now. If you need an answer from God, start plugging in right now. I'm preaching. I'm going to get you there, and then we're going to let God do whatever he wants to do. I don't care what your situation is. He's a healer. I don't care what dilemma you face. He's a way maker. I don't care how bad the obstacle is. He's a chain breaker. He's a promise keeper. He's a soul saver. He can take care of whatever you're facing tonight. So let your faith, faith cometh by what? And hearing by? So while I preach, let your faith begin to rise. Mix the word of God with faith in your spirit today that God would intervene on your behalf. First John chapter 2, and then we're going to 1 Corinthians. First John chapter 2, one verse. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But what I want you to notice is that everybody say this world is dying. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7, one verse of scripture, verse 31. Everybody say the world is dying. Verse 31 says, And they that use this world, then there's a comma, and he says, as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Now, New York, Milan, Paris, uh, they would be disappointed in that. But I got news for the fashion industry your fashion is fading away. Your models are getting old. That's not what it's talking about, but it is appropriate. The point is, is that this world has got an end date. It's going down. But the kingdom of God is going up. But there's a little secret that I have found in the Word of God, and I want to preach to you about it tonight. And my title is Power from the World to Come. Power from the World to Come. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm tapping in. And you may be seated. One of, one of the great writers of... Christianity was a great writer before he became a believer in Christ, but uh, even his writing following uh, has been very instrumental for many people in their attempt at faith. And his name is C.S. Lewis, and I, I asked the screen team to put up uh, a quote that I <clears throat> am familiar with that I thought was appropriate for this message C.S. Lewis said, we find ourselves in a world of transporting pleasures, ravishing beauties, and tantalizing possibilities, but all constantly being destroyed, all coming to nothing, nature has all the air of a good thing spoiled. And I don't know if there is a more apt description than Mr. Lewis's uh, pen that particular day. I have traveled now to 46 or 47 different nations of the world, and I will be honest, I have seen some of the most magnificent things uh, that God has made. I have seen incredible displays of man's ability, and uh, I love both mountains and beaches. I also love what man has been able to do because I, I think God gets glory even out of what man has built. I have seen things that have boggled my mind, <clears throat> mountain passes and, and beautiful valleys and uh, farms, and I have seen, I stood in amazement on a, a boat in Hong Kong a few weeks ago and looked as they instructed everyone on the boat to open up the Hong Kong app and I looked at however many miles of skyline that line uh, Victoria Harbor, 
as thousands and thousands of buildings taller than our biggest skyscrapers downtown Sacramento. And if you were to take San Francisco and Oakland skyline, put them together, it would only be like a penny's worth of what Hong Kong skyline looks like. But to my amazement, we stood and watched as suddenly as miles and miles of skyscrapers suddenly begin to blink and lights and lasers as signs begin to play as as united with the music on your phone that was suddenly playing as the skyline began to dance and blink and shoot out messages in rhythm to the music all over the city. And I sat in amazement thinking how incredible God is to give the ingenuity and the technology into the minds of humanity. And I have seen incredible accomplishments and incredible beauty and technological advancements. And if the Lord tarries, no telling what we're going to see. But I have to admit that it's all going down. Because to the best of our attempts, I don't know if it's dawned on you, we're not real good. Because if we just take recorded history, we won't get into the old earth, young earth, we'll just take recorded history over the last 6,000 years. Let's just start there. You would think in 6,000 years we could figure some stuff out. But we haven't been very good. Because for the last 5,900 years, we were still riding horses, donkeys, and camels. It's only been in the last hundred years that we got trains, planes, and automobiles. Now we're feeling real good about drones and so on and so forth. But, but for all of our technology, for all of our colleges, for all of our, we, we learned that bloodletting wasn't a very good thing. And we learned that we had to fight bacteria and where it used to be that you would, you would not change your surgery garment but you would leave the blood from the former patient on there. It was like a badge of honor. The bloodier the coat, the more skilled the doctor was. And literally, we were killing people in surgery rooms in the last 150 years. Thank God for what we've learned. But folks, after 6,000 years, we feel good if we live to 70 or 80, and 90 is really good. We haven't done so well. The point is, is that even with all of our knowledge, all of our understanding, all of the things that we have created and built, we are looking at a world that is reeling, falling apart. Al Gore told us that we only had a few years left. And now AOC has told us, I think we got 15 years before it all burns up. And, and, and maybe she's right, and maybe he's right. And I can tell you, there is global warming coming. And it don't matter how many cows you, you kill and how many cars you stop, global warming's coming on an unprecedented front. It's called the judgment fire of God. The earth has a shelf life as we know it. And by the way it's, it's happening, it is you take the world and look at what all of our education and all of our political maneuvering and all of our financial ability and all of our learning and knowledge, you would think we would all get along. But we're fighting more than we've ever fought. Because it seems like there's something in Earth's condition, there's some kind of curse that for every victory we gain and for every accomplishment we make, it creates another problem. And it's the never-ending cycle of learning and accomplishments and building, but as soon as we build that or create, we figure out that's got another side to it. And the trouble just keeps increasing. And everything has a tendency to decline. Our bodies. Now, we work against it. We, we, we go run, we go jog, we work on our diet, we work on our exercise, but it, it doesn't matter. Even the most fit among us can't quite lift as much as they used to could. 
And the fastest among us kind of has to slow down and, and uh, just, just pick the greatest athlete of the 80s. And they don't walk so good now in 2000. And the cheeks begin to sag. And then you got to go do the, the cat surgery to look like a cat, fix all that. You ever notice they all, they all wind up looking the same, I've noticed. I had, I had a fun time. We were down in Southern California earlier this year, and, and I couldn't hardly find one woman that looked real. And every store we went in with my wife and daughters, we went in there, and it was like every, everybody just stared at them. And I'm thinking, they're staring at them, and then it dawned on me, they're the only ones with real lips. Why is all that working? Because we're figuring out, we're breaking down. And so whatever's breaking down, we got to lift up. I'll just leave that right there. There's a tendency to decline, not just in your body, but with this world. You build it up, prop it up, pump it up, lift it up. It's coming down. Because everything is in a state of decline. That new car, just give it about five years, it'll squeak in places you didn't even know it existed. Everything starts to decay from the moment it starts moving, working. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29 said that the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wise be as though they had none. Paul was warning them. He said, there's a window right now. And he said, be very careful. And he was talking about a particular, particular season that, that was going. They, they only had a window where they could function in this, in this way because there was more trouble coming. And as I look at the earth today, I see a changing world. I see a world that is hell-bent on destruction. Uh, I, I was connecting in Frankfurt yesterday in the airport coming in from Norway, and <clears throat> they had a new thing I'd never encountered there at the airport, just walking along through the, the uh, airport, and there was four desks out in the middle, a portable desk, and a man said, sir, could you stop and talk to the custom agent before you go to the gates? I said, sure. And as I walked up, he began to, he began to give me the ninth degree and began to try and figure out if, if I was going to do something negative at the airport or whatever reason. He, he decided he was going to grill me, and before it was over, I wanted to know where I'd been, where I was going, and so I was happy to tell him I didn't have anything to hide. And then he said, he said, what do you do? I said, the easiest thing would, say, would have been just say, well, I'm a tourist. But I just, he was giving me his business, so I decided I was going to give him some of my business. I said, I'm a pastor of a church. I said it about like that. And he said, really? And the other three custom agents at there, they stopped and started finding out what I, I was talking about. And he got this little smart aleck look on his face. He said, oh, you're a pastor, huh? I said, yeah. He said, well, then tell me, what is all those horns coming out of the water? In those visions in that book of Revelation. And I said, well, buddy, if you figure all that out, you need to write a book and you won't have to work here anymore. And then he said, no, tell me what you think it is. I said, well, it tells me, the Bible tells me and shows me that that's, that's depicting a world that is really messed up and the judgment of God is going to come to the earth and that's about the nations. And, the, and I figured by then, I just started unloading on him, eschatology 101. And he just kind of looked there and figured out, oh, he really is a preacher. But as I look at the Word of God, even, even people that don't even know God recognize that our world is in bad shape. And, and, and the Apostle Paul said in our text, he, he talked about people, and it seems a little bit strange in the King James Version, where he says, said that the world's passing away, and he said, he said, use this world, use the world, but then he said, but not abusing it. What he was warning them was, you're here, you're living in it, you're working in it, you're a part of a world that is fading away. He said, and you've got to use it, you've got to work it. But he said, 
What he's really saying is, don't get too invested down here. Don't, don't abuse your faith. Don't, don't abuse your life and your soul and give everything you've got to a world. Why? Because he said, the world is on its way down and you need to make sure, as Bishop says, you're tying your life to some issues of ultimate concern. As I look at the political, social, global landscape of our world, I see shifting scenes. I see dying futures. I see things that what once appeared glorious now seem to be disrupted. The reason is because it's fading away. The world is dying. Psalm 39 and verse 6 said, Surely every man walketh in vain, Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, knowing knoweth not, and knoweth not who shall gather them. What the psalmist is saying is, he said, think about the vanity of life. If all you're living for is your job, your 401K, and your little house, the picket fence, and the car, and then you're going to get all that, you're going to get the gold watch, you're going to get the retirement plan, and, and, and then guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. Let me let you on a secret. You're going to die. You're not going to live on this earth forever. At some point, if the Lord tarries, everybody, I don't know, boy, boy, I could act like I'm a prophet right now. Mm, I sense that you're going to die. Every single one of you good-looking young men, and even the ugly ones, You're going to die. Think about that. How old are you, Jordan? 19. I don't know when you're going to die. I hope it's not tonight. Carson, how old are you? 23, you old man. Your girlfriend was here while I was gone. And you didn't get married. You didn't. You could have eloped, saved a lot of money. But guess what? You're going to die. Mike, you're going to die. You know? Do you know you're going to die? What about you? Do you know you're going to die? How old are you? Twelve. Death seems so far off. But you're going to die. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Not tonight, chill. We're all going to, babe, what are you looking at me like I lost my mind? You're worried about, you're worried about them having nightmares? You need to buy a premier Bible and read it. And a Miles Young CD to listen to while you're reading it. I'm not trying to scare you, but I want you to know you're going to die. We're all going to die. I'm going to die. If the Lord tears, we're all going to die. Because we're part of a dying world. We are dying creatures. Our very existence is for whatever period of time we have, and we're trying to extend it as long as we can. But we're all going to die. And he said, surely every man walketh in vain. So he said, if you're heaping up riches, what good does a 401k do when you're dead? What good does all that money mean when you're dead? The point he's making is, if your life is built on your nest egg, or your bank account, or the size of your house, or the size of your car, and how much notoriety you have in the community. It doesn't matter what position you have at City Hall. The moment you die, it's over. And the psalmist said, that's a vain thing. It's vanity. If that's what you're living for, it's vanity. I'm reminded of 
the old play, all those weird poems that you read in high school or college and then you forgot about and then you become a preacher and you look for material and things come back to your memory. And I, I looked this one up because I couldn't remember it all, but it just fits so well. Shakespeare said in Macbeth, he said, Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that strut and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. He said, Everybody, those fancy old English words, he was basically saying, everybody thinks they're the cat's meow on the stage. And oh, the strut. But then he said, they're gone and remembered no more. If we started asking Brother Wilson, can you name the top three basketball players when you were in high school, NBA basketball players, who's three? Three NBA basketball players. Kuzi, Chamberlain, West. I want every boy in here that's 18 years old and understand, understand up. Do you know Kuzi's first name? We got one joker that knew his name was Bob. That was who, which was it, you? Okay. How many didn't know his first name was Bob? Let me see your hand. How many never heard of Bob Cousy? You may be seated. You're not going to believe this, but pick the biggest superstar, and when you're Brother Wilson H., your kids won't know any of those guys. How many of you girls know who Barry Gibb is? Do you know who Sean Cassidy is? No. Do y'all know who Farrah Fawcett is? I saw a bunch of 40-year-old men go, yeah. Yeah. You're going to grow old if the Lord tarries and your grandkids, they ain't even going to know who the Kardashians are. As they get in their drone car to go to the nitro hamburger joint that you don't eat, you just inject it. <laughs> Download a hamburger into your brain. Listening to some artificial robot play a MIDI guitar and you oh what music and we're going to get up and sing bless the Lord bah, bah, and go all oh, the hymns of the church they're playing those old funky songs again it's dying the world is dying I'm trying to keep you all awake tonight as you can tell her maybe I'm trying to keep me awake brother young so I thought we were going to talk about the power of the world to come. That's, uh, that's why I got you right here. I wanted to show you how this world is going away. Okay, so I need this whole front row right here. This whole front row. Stand up. Come up here. Okay, I want y'all to stand right there with the heels against, turn around and face your future. Somewhere out there is your wife. All right? Then I want, I want uh, the back three rows right there. Boston, you and Brother Anthony, that Brother Anderson, y'all back there. I'll, I'll let the elders on the front stay there. Y'all come right here, and I want y'all to come. I want y'all to come stand right here. Boss, you stand right here behind him. Stand right here. On the carpet. Line up on the carpet. Shoulder to shoulder. Everybody say, this is the world to come. So here's what's going on in your life and mine right now. So now I need, Brother I need two tall guys. Come on, uh, Brother Jordan, come, you're tall. Come here, John Mark, you're tall. I want, Brother, Brother Jordan, I want you to stand right here. Okay, I want you to stand right there, and I want you to stand right here. Okay? 
So, we will call this row, this is, can y'all see them? Kind of, you got the idea? Okay, y'all step, just kind of do a, like a little twist deal for a minute. Just kind of, that row just march out. Okay, see them? Y'all see them over here? Okay, now you can go back. Can y'all see all them? Can I come this way a little bit? Your moment in the sunshine. There they are right there. Okay, you can go back. So this is the present age. You got it? And then this is the world to come. Hold your hand, Boston. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. This is the world to come. This is earth. This is the chronological ticking from, from Adam to right here. Do like some glorious presentation of yourself. <laughs> this is the rapture of the church. <laughs> now, John Mark, I want you to hold out your hands and hang your head. That's the cross. And here's the rapture. Now this is us. This is where we live. We're still a part of this world, but we're not yet in that one all the way. We're caught between the world that's passing away and the world that is coming. And so here's what happens. I taste both worlds at the present time. Just stay right there. You can relax. Rapture and Calvary. I want that in your mind. If you're wondering where you are, you're in between the dying world and the coming world. Bible scholars call that the already, not yet. Because of the work of Calvary, the power outpouring in Acts chapter 2, you and I were in this line of human existence. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, we were ushered into the world to come, but yet we're not totally there. Are you understanding this illustration? So here I may get cancer in my body, but in eternity, I am healed. But the same way I can still get cancer, I can tap into the realm of the world that is to come. So in this natural world I live, I give of my tithe and offering, and I tap into the economy to come. But I struggle. Sometimes I have the victory of tomorrow while struggling with the dying present world. My body is racked with pain. I'm dealing with issues of life. But I get back to the house of God and I tap into the world to come. Some of you wonder. You wonder, well, I thought I got saved. You did. But you're not yet here. You're on this side. Go, rapture. Rapture. You're on this side. But when I go up and into this dimension, no more sin, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more pain. Over here, I didn't have any hope. But through the Holy Ghost, I'm ushered into this realm between the dying world and the coming world. This is what the apostle talked about when he said, the Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. So the Holy Ghost is the down payment of what I'm going to get. One day, it all changes forever and everybody. But now, we see through a glass darkly. Because right? I'm looking through today. I'm looking through the, my fallen, my fallenness. Because I'm still, I'm still in this human condition. I have been freed from the law of sin and death, but yet I am still bound in this flesh. 
This is, and you get this understanding and you go read Paul's writing. A lot of things begin to make sense. And this is why he could say to live is Christ. I'm going to tap into Christ. But if something happens and I'm ushered early through death into this dimension, then man, it's game. What that means is it gives you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions in this life because you know no matter what happens to me, I've got a heavenly promise because I've already been given the down payment of what I'm going to get. The point of this is, and I'm coming to a close, musicians, would you come? Is that no matter how bad this dying world gets, If I'm in Christ, if I'm in Christ, yeah, I'm still still bound to my humanity. But I have tasted of the good world to come. And I am in this already, not yet. Yeah, I, I may wake up with trouble, but I can lay my head on the pillow at night and know that God's still with me. I may have disease in my body, but I got eternal life on the inside. So I said, don't, don't fear those that can kill the body. You need to be concerned about what's coming after. But here's what I felt in the Holy Ghost. At any moment, this world can break into this world. Do you really believe that? That's what miracles are. That's what healing is. That's what favor is. And had tasted Hebrews 6 and 5, the good word of God, and the power. Everybody say the power. Notice it's plural. And the powers of the world to come. What I want you to get is you are living whether you got sickness in your body, whether you're dealing with hell on earth right now, within you, if you have the Holy Ghost, you've got a taste of the powers that's multiple, that's plural, of the powers of the world to come. That means, Brother Bertram, no matter what hell's in my life, I can tap into powers, plural that are so far beyond what I'm dealing with today. Miracles, signs. Let me see your hand if you've ever had a a notable, a real, you know it was a miracle from God, a healing from God. Let me see your hand. God gives us, it's like All Nations Sunday. We go out there, think about it. The winning booth was, what was the Cajun booth? Is that what it was? And the number two, I think, was Hawaii. Was that right? And then what was, the, what was the third one? Puerto Rico? What was it? Hawaii was third. Port- Boy, y'all know this stuff. Man, I was number one, I know. But here, here's, that was called a taste fair. That's really what that was. You went to the booth from Puerto Rico. What did y'all serve in the Puerto Rico booth? I don't remember. What was it? Pina coladas, they were not spiked. You got one of those Holy Ghost pina coladas. And when you drank it, it was like 100 degrees out there and that cold, boy, I wish I had five of them right now. And you got that coconut cream milk, that, ooh, doesn't that sound good right now? And you turned it up to your lips, you tasted it. You didn't get a whole bottle. In fact, you didn't get all of Puerto Rico. You just got a little taste. You got a little taste that was to make you want to know about Puerto Rico. And then you went to the Cajun booth and they had that, whatever that, it wasn't etouffee, it was like some kind of chowder. What was it? Crawfish chowder, that's what it was. Ain't a Cajun ever said chowder. Oh, well. But you tasted it and that pepper hit your tongue and it just made you want to get on a plane and go to New Orleans and go get some beignets from Cafe Du Monde, sprinkle some, some white powdered sugar on top and drink a hot cup of community coffee 
and get powder all over your blue jeans and sweat in that humidity and watch the big easy roll by at Jackson Square. I just want to go there right now thinking about that's what it does to you. It makes you want to go. And that's what happens when you taste the good world to come. You know it ain't everything, but oh, doesn't it feel good on Sunday night? You come from all the hell of this falling, dying world, and you lift up your hands and you get a little taste of the world to come, and you go, heaven, I want to go there. And all that's good. But what God does is he puts supernatural breakthroughs as little tasting cups to keep you in the journey. And so you can come on a Sunday night and somebody can get healed in this world from the not yet world. The Holy Ghost is a taste of what heaven's going to be in this present world. It's the earnest of our inheritance. Hebrews 1 and 2, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, who he he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Hebrews 2, 4, God also bearing them witness, both with signs, wonders, divers, miracles, gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. These are the previews of the future age that is to come. So where are we? We're living in that already not yet dimension. That's where the war takes place. So tonight, if you've got a need in your life, Brother Young, I've come to church before and I didn't get a miracle. Yeah, me too. But I've come on other nights and got a miracle. See, this is why, this is why not everybody gets healed every time. Because we're still right here. And we're going to die. But in some dimension of faith, there are divine tasting fairs where God says, I'm going to do something tonight that reveals what's coming. I don't know who it is tonight, but I know what I felt in prayer. I'm not some TV preacher up here tonight telling you that everybody in this room is going to get healed if we all say glory five times, run around the building, wave a magic hanky and give $100. That's not what I'm talking about. That's a bunch of baloney. Don't buy into that junk. Not everybody's going to get healed. Not everybody's going to be pulled off a deathbed. Boy, if if I had that kind of power, I'd just go to the hospital tonight and lay hands on everybody. But I can tell you that things happen right there things happen right there I've had needs in my life and I got in that dimension and said God there's a world out there that's so far beyond my understanding and I need a breakthrough and I've watched God come through for me does anybody know what I'm talking about this is what I felt to do I've tried to make it fun and keep you engaged but there's, I'm, I'm serious about what I'm saying tonight I got a feeling there's somebody in here that's going to get into that zone tonight and God's going to meet a need. I don't know who you are. Don't leave and say, well, you said I would and I didn't. I didn't say you would. I don't know who it's going to be. But I can tell you something's going to happen for somebody. I don't understand it all, but it has something to do with faith and trust in God and for his ultimate purpose. Gentlemen, thank you. Give our, give our actors a great hand. We're not singing yet. We're not standing. But if you've got a real need, I want you to stand up. A real need. A real need. Come up here. Meet me up front right now. You that are standing quickly. This could be the night. Come up close. Just give a little room for somebody to get in front of you so they can pray with you. Little room in front of the steps. Amen.
Brother Young, you believe God could do it? You better believe I believe God could do it. I believe God could heal every one of these or meet every one of these needs. I believe that. Amen. Amen. Sister Johnson, I see you coming. Amen. Jordan, guys, y'all make room. Let her sit right there on that front row. Amen. Holy Ghost fell where they were sitting. I believe it could touch Sister Joyce tonight. Amen. Bless her in Jesus' name. This is not about, you that are down here, this is not about how good of a Christian you've been. Okay, I want to get that out of your mind. Because we've all made mistakes. And what, what the devil does is he comes and he condemns. He's the condemner, the accuser of the brethren. And he, he wants to point out all of our mistakes, our faults, and say, well, you, you know, you're not going to be the one because you, you hadn't been. This isn't like Boy Scout merit badges. I've seen God heal some pretty weird people. I've seen God bring miracle to people. I'm thinking, God, man, why would you heal him? That ain't what this is about. This is about saying, God, I trust you, and I love you, and I worship you. And this could be the night that I tap into that world to come. And God, I know that I'm subject to vanity and I'm subject to death because I'm a human being and I know there's issues that I just have to deal with. But God, I want you to know how great you are and how wonderful you are and how, how powerful you are. And the Bible says that we have tasted of the powers. When I get to heaven, I'm going to figure out what that means. I'm going to ask God what that means. I don't understand what that means, but, but it's big. Powers. There must be dimensions of power that we don't even, we can't even comprehend. All, whatever little bit we got with the Holy Ghost, it, it's only a little smidgen of what's really out there. I want the rest of this church to stand. And I, I want the ministry, would you come? I want you to just spread out across this front. I want everybody to get, get uh, prayed for. I want everybody that's standing here. And I, I, want, I want an army. I want an army to come stand behind them. Amen. Don't get in front of them. Let, them. let the ministry move back and forth. So let's give the ministry room to lay hands. But I want some men and women of faith to come. These people acknowledged while you were sitting comfortably, they stood up and walked to the front. And they said, I got a real need. That means they need our prayers today. And I believe that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's something about prayer. There's something about faith. There's something about worship. That all of that combined and the presence of God begins to move. Miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverance begins to take place. And as they begin to sing in just a moment, those of you that came down here say you had a need, I want you to lift up your hands and begin to praise your God. I want you to begin to worship Him. I want you to begin to honor Him. Hallelujah. This is not some, some, some prophet or somebody laying hands on you with a miracle hanky. It's your faith. It's your worship. It's your love for Jesus Christ. There is a power that is available. Hallelujah. If we seek the face of God, it could be that tonight could be your night. As they begin to sing, a miracle can happen. Come on, the Holy Ghost a is here.